Hello my friend, welcome. In this video, I will show you about the new version of Affinity Designer using iPad Pro. If you don't know me, I'm John Silva and I'm responsible to create many uh, hundreds of tutorials using Affinity Designer on iPad and desktop. So if you want to learn much more about these topics, please, you can get my new course or join the club. Or if you don't want none of this, you can just uh, hit the subscribe and follow me in this free content. So as many of you already know, Affinity has released a new version uh, universal license where you can get all the apps including macOS, Windows and iPad for the three apps which means nine license in just one single license. And if you want, you can get the apps separated one by one if you want, but of course um, the price here seems more affordable by the one-time license and as i see on the affinity groups community some people are not happy with this new payment about getting new versions but others are really happy because they are supporting affinity to grow more to hire new you know, uh, professionals and keep the developers motivated and i totally agree with this i think that affinity really deserves to have our support to grow and bring more uh, new features okay so let's talk about the affinity designer on ipad pro so i will open here with you the new affinity app and then this is our first screen that you are seeing so there is a huge difference compared to this new interface compared to the past version now you can select the options by swiping because before we had the menu icon and then here you can duplicate you can rename or save here on the new you can create a new document and then we have a new interface where you can set all these options over here so the very first difference that you're gonna see it is that they have made the new interface by creating new icons they have moved the panel below to top they have inserted now the new guides here on top as well and also new features over here which is the shape builder knife tool and other functionalities and now i have five percent battery on my ipad okay let me bring here my now all good but, all right let's talk about what is new here on the ipad in that case i will start with the paint tool when you select the paint tool you see here that you have a slider where you can basically create some points like this one and then you can change the width by clicking on here also when you are using the pencil tool you have now the stabilizer mode by clicking on here which means that if you draw you can select this to draw immediately over the pencil tip or if you want to add more soft you can increase on here and then you're gonna have a smooth line yard if you select here you can change the width uh, increasing or decreasing here below as you can see you have the command toggles here you can enable by clicking this button enable and then you can use your finger over here if you want to move this uh, for example you can hold and then you can move this to here and then you can work from this area if you hold to this uh, left side using pencil tool you can basically have a straight line so if you are drawing and then you uh, hold the this arrow so you can have straight lines in order to draw just like that so let's say that you have a bunch of uh, shapes being created over here and then I will change uh, their layers on here. For example, I've just opened it and there is a difference that you're gonna see here on this new version is that now you have a compact mode by click on here. So you can uh, work with multiple layers in this compact mode. If you want to show more options, you can swipe this left and then you have these options, which is the mask. You can also apply the blend modes by click on here and also have the opacity you can select the layer that you want to apply the opacity and decrease from here also you can lock the layer if you want and just apply here as well icon here to enable or disable in this new version of the ipad you can now select the same object so let's take a look here as you can see we have the uh, context toolbar so if we apply some colors to these rectangles for example let's say that you want to change here just like this and this one here can be like that in that case if you want to select the same object that follow with the same color you can click here on top select same and then fill color 
I think you will select all the shape that has the same properties by the few and then you can recolor this is very nice because now as you do your work you can select for example the same few and then change the color based on the same colors also here on these options on top you have the options which is the geometry path which is here so let's say that you want to uh, select this shapes and click here on top and then click on add is going to merge the shapes also in this new new version Affinity has added new options here on top where you can just click here to display more options or click here to uh, zoom in or zoom out also here in this button here you can get the guides you can get the grid and also you can edit the grid by clicking on here to change the grid now you can change here on top because previously you need to change here below that case you can go here and change the uh, spacing and other settings that it is available here on top also a big difference is that affinity has moved the the magnet icon which is, has been available here below and now it's here on top you can click here and enable the snapping or if you want to change the options you can go here snapping options and then open this new interface uh, that you can change what you want to snap visit on this presence here on affinity on ipad now you have the compact mode for the brushes so let's take a look here if you open the brushes panel you will get the brushes right so if you click in this icon you can filter them by thumbnails uh, for example open here or oh, that case i want to select the vector brush all right something that i personally don't like is that uh, it's not available here the vector brush so you need to click here or and drag to select the vector brush so i found this not very uh, you know usable because you need to click here twice or click and drag and to change here so of course we have this on that we can get used but uh, honestly i think that would be nice to have the vector brushes fast and accessible here in that case i'll insert here the brushes by you know uh, dragging just like that and then you can keep selected and change the brush strokes based on the textures on here in this new version now you have the shortcuts basically if you insert any kind of shape that is missing for now the trash button which is not that i also was not very happy because some people have been struggling to find how to delete the objects but that case for now what you can do it is just to use the three fingers and then uh, swipe down and then click here to delete so if you do this you can have the shortcuts options enable here which is the basic operations duplicate copy cut and others one here below you have the shortcuts that you can custom this is something that i really like it because now you can basically even change the options here uh, of course there is not many options because i think that the app is still need to have more improvements and updates but for now we have these few options which means that affinity will start to add more options like insert side like other options that I use a lot uh, we have here the solo mode that it is working much better I feel like when you are um, adding new objects it's working so far better In that case let me deactivate here you can use the expand stroke from here instead of going here on top and clicking on expand stroke now it's easier for you to expand stroke by using three fingers or if you want you can hold and release the finger then we're gonna have access to these options now it's time to talk with you about the new features In that case we're gonna start here by showing you the knife tool so first of all to use the knife tool you need to have a shape which is in vector and then i will select here the knife and then i will just uh, click and drag in order to select the air that i want to slice and here on top you can uh, add the option which is the straight line on here you can drag and have more precision over your uh, selected area and then you can slice the object easily just like this also by using the knife tool you can go here and then click on the line in order to separate these nodes and then you're gonna have the scissor being applied on there if you want to close go here on top click this button and then you're gonna close as well if you keep everything selected just like this here on top you have this arrow that's going to display more options which is here the transform uh, object separately if you want to keep this selected and then if you want to rotate then separately 
you're gonna have this result again if you keep this command turned on let's say you can snap from here you also can uh, smooth duplicate by going here and finally my friend let's talk about the new shape builder tool this is a feature that many people has been requesting affinity to bring and now it's available to you here as well on ipad pro that case let's get started and see how that works to use the shape builder of course you need to have the vector shapes so to do this i will insert some shapes on here just show you how that works just like that and take advantage to demonstrate to you how uh, this new feature here works is that you can enable here on the navigator panel the x-ray mode this uh, option here it's really helpful in case that you want to see the shapes in between because before you can see like that and then with the new x-ray you can see just like this go to the shape builder tool and then you have these options here on top how that works well first of all you have some options here on top if you select the shape builder without selecting here these options what's gonna happen affinity will just keep the shape builder selected on these areas let's say you want to subtract these areas here you can go here in this minus icon and then it's going to subtract if you leave this uh, enabled basically affinity will uh, consider that this area selected this red areas is going to be deleted also if you want to merge you can do here on top keeping it selected and then you can for example merge these shapes just like that can you see that we have a shape here on top this one so uh, there is an option that you can uh, keep enabled okay this one here uh, automatic cleanup in usage curves from unfilled object so if you leave that option enabled affinity will delete the unused errors so of course you need to be very careful when you use this do not delete others objects that you are not working on so i'll leave this deactivated here i'll click on the subtract and then i'll delete this one which is uh, outside that one i will delete here and then i can for example keep the shapes like that and then i'll back to the vector mode and then i can work and add colors to these shapes here Now it's possible to have the measure and error tool. How this works? First of all, if we go here, I will keep this object selected as you can see. If I click in this error tool, you will see that I think it will bring the error of this object here selected. Also, you can use the ruler, which is the measure tool, this one, and then you can select one point and go onto another point. So you're gonna have the distance between the uh, shapes now it's possible to use layer effects in multiple times how this works first of all i'll keep one object selected it can be this one here and then i'll select this panel and these options as you can see you can activate the outer shadow also if i click in this plus icon you can add another drop shadow here this like this control where you can change the opacity you can change the radius and also you can change the distance the offset in that case also if you want to change the color you can go here on top and then change the color that you want to apply now you can also delete outer shadow click here in this trash icon and then affinity will delete now my friend it's time to show you the mesh tool using affinity on ipad so to activate this option, you need to open the layers panel and go here on top. You're gonna see these options. So if you want to enable the mesh tool, you can go here in this text, mesh. I think it will bring this grid here where you can just select the nodes and change the mesh tool. We have here the options being applied on top where you can change here the type of this mesh. For example, here we have changed it to quad where you can change in this way also if you want to mute you can go here to mute the mesh here we have other options that you can change from this area perspective let's say you want to change this in perspective very nice look you can get very nice results also you can change and add the curves based on this keep in mind that if you want to change this as pure vector let's say 
Affinity will keep the object non-destructible here inside. So if you want to make this edible, you need to go here in this icon on top. So this will convert that shape in vector. So right now you can change the curves based on these areas. Right now I'm going to show you how the bench works with the mesh tool. First of all, I will select a text I'll create here. So after you insert the text, you can go on layers panel, click here, and then you can go to the band horizontal. If you do this, you can apply the bench mode based on this. If you want to change this, for example, to others band, like the arc, which is on that, uh, is very useful. You can go here and change the values based on these areas. Uh, if you change the, the text position, it's going to have this kind of effect, okay? Why? Because Affinity is applying the band mode in that specific area. So, if you add any kind of shape, let's say you add a shape just like this, and then apply inside of the group, the vector here will get adapted to what is inside. Clicking this option here on top is going to convert the text in curves. And now you cannot edit as text, but yes, you can edit as curve. All right, my friend, as you can see, we have just covered the most essential features that Affinity just brought to us. And I will give you my personal thoughts over this new version. As I see, Affinity is really improving more and bringing more resources. And this is just the beginning. I think that for this very first 2.0 release, I think that they are still preparing, you know, the, the app to get and add more resources. Because of course, to make this app usable, uh, performing very well, it takes time, it takes a huge uh, investment, and uh, I really hope that they will be able to bring more features like you. I really miss the mirror mode in order to create in vector, so I hope that they will bring this in the upcoming updates. And then I'd like to invite you to join to my new class, the master class of Affinity 2.0, where I will teach you from basic to advanced how to use Affinity Designer 2.0. I go direct to the point, I show what really matters, and you're gonna learn everything on this new version. That's it for now. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. And if you have missed the other video that I did on desktop, reviewing and showing you how the Affinity 2.0 works on desktop, go check it out on my another video that I'll leave here the link as well. So take care and I see you in another video. Bye bye.